everybody in the Bronx, elsewhere in New York, pleading with the pinstripes. Make it stop. Start winning games again. The Yankees have lost 16 of their last 21, dating back to June 14th. On that date, after a victory over the Red Sox, they were 50-22, and 22, nearly 30 games above 500, with baseball's best record. Mark Zinno, I look forward to your mm. thoughts as we break down the second game of a midweek set between the Yankees and their divisional foes, the Rays, at the Trop. Tampa victorious yesterday, 5-3. to three. They scored four runs in the home half of the first and never looked back. Will it end today? Will the Yankees finally register a win to get back into the win column at the Trop? I, I mean, I, I would not back Marcus Stroman all that much. Uh, um, guarantee that Boone's going to leave him in for about four outs too long. Uh, we know that's going to happen just because he has to get through mm. five, right? But here's the interesting part. The Yankees are 10 and 15 straight up as an underdog this year. They are a short dog here tonight. Tampa Bay, the slight favorite uh, in this spot here. And, and look, you guys know my thoughts on the Orioles. I've been telling everybody all season long I thought they were going to win the AL East and that they were a better team. Here's the dichotomy. The Orioles have seven guys and two jabronis in their lineup. The Yankees have two guys and seven jabronis in their lineup. <laughs> That's the ultimate difference as to why the Orioles are that much better than the Yankees are right now. So uh, after you get through Soto and Judge, it ain't that hard to get guys out. When when you're batting Trevino and, and these guys who are hitting less than 200, on a night-in, night-out basis, I'm not sure what you would like. As much as I despise Aaron Boone, I'm not sure what else he can do. He can only play the guys that are on the roster right now. This is a poorly constructed roster. Who would have thought I would be saying here as we approach the All-Star break, God, I miss Giancarlo Stanton, because that's not a phrase I ever thought I would utter, um, you know, his entire contract with the Yankees. But they do miss his bat for as much as his 245 average, he, the guy hit the ball to the ballpark, and every time he touched the bat with the ball, it seemed to go a long way. So that was enough for that lineup to look a little bit different. Not the case right now. Guys, I like the under tonight. Believe it or not, I will believe that the Rays can't score because I think their offense stinks, and this is a team with a negative 60 run differential for a reason because they're not good. Um, but, you know, hopefully Stroman doesn't get blown up. We knew Radon was going to get – he's a hump. We knew he was going to get killed last night. We're never back to either. <laughs> But, you know, as long as Stroman can be mostly out of trouble here tonight, I like the under. There you go with that. But, yeah, shout-out DJ LeMahieu, two base hits last night to get right around a 200 batting average, batting in the eighth and ninth in that order ben here. Rice Tough scene for the Yankees. But, yeah, by the way, they got really lucky yesterday that the Chicago Cubs iced over the Baltimore Orioles. I don't know if that's going to take place today. Burns is back on the mound at home as a Oof. minus 174 current favorite here at the FanDuel Sportsbook, a total of eight and a half. Now, hear me out on this too, Mark. You got 85 to 90 degree temperatures, 15 plus mile an hour winds blowing out today. Oh. Imanaga typically it seemed like, hey, the Cubs can win again. He's been a shell of his former self of what he started the season. What are we looking at for Baltimore today? Did they get back in the right direction here in the win column? I mean, God, talk, the one game I got wrong last night was the Orioles. Thought they would really pounce yeah. all over. Yeah. Uh, Cubs and Dean yeah. Kramer. You know, nothing like playing on Dean Kramer, playing against Dean Kramer, rather, his first start off the IL to watch him go five innings, two hits, no runs, and eight strikeouts, only to go back home and get rocked. Uh, cut your hair, Dean. Anyway, uh, Imanaga, here's the thing. He's been really good against teams he's seen for the first time, right? Like, that's the wild card in this scenario here. The Orioles haven't seen him. They, I mean, sure, they've watched film on him, but they've never seen him live before. So there's a slight edge to Imanaga in that spot, but – you know, you look at Corbin Burns, who's been the ace of their staff. How do you not back him, especially as a guy this year who's been the beneficiary of a good amount of run support Corbin Burns has uh, for, for the Orioles, getting nearly five and a half runs per game. Burns at 12 and six when he starts. So hard to play against him in this spot. Yeah, Mark Zeno correctly predicted Shota Iminaga's downfall in his final start mm. of May because yeah. prior to that, he was 5-0 and oh with a .84 ERA. Now the record 7-2 and two with a 3-1-6 ERA for Shota Iminaga in his first year in Major League Baseball. Quickly here, Zeno, let's go late night to San Francisco out in Northern California. Logan Webb, the all-star ace for San Francisco, gets the start for the Giants. They're a dollar and a half favorite against the Blue Jays. What's the play here? Chris Bassett is not the same pitcher on the road as he is at home. His splits are quite dynamic. However, he's been better this year, but has not gotten a lot of run support. Just uh, two and three on the road this year, but a sub three ERA. I like the Giants in the first five who at Logan Webb or the first five under. I think 
Uh, again, this is a Giants offense. I don't like to back all that often. So if we get good Logan Webb at home, Giants should be okay. Listen, your breakdown for the Yanks in the trop today was exactly worth the billing and why you are here. Sensational passion, Mark Zeno. We appreciate the time always. Hour number three on the other side of the break here on TEL. We're not worried about the Dodgers and the Phillies here. And probably we should be worried about the New York Yankees. But just a few short weeks ago, maybe the best team in baseball, at least record-wise. Now they find themselves in second place in the AL East, three games behind the Baltimore Orioles. They lose yesterday 5-3. to three. Carlos Rodon gets blown up in the first inning, giving up four runs. Are we panicking a little bit here with the New York Yankees, Craig? And what do we see in the short-term future for them of how they can get back on the right track? I, I understand that Yankees fans are upset. Everybody wants Boone fired again. Like, we go through this every single year, it feels like. And then when you look at the standings, if you didn't know any better, you would think the Yankees are, what, four or five games over 500, teetering on the verge of the postseason. Guys are 17 games over 500. If they finish 17 games over and just play 500 ball the rest of the season, they're going to make the postseason. Now, as I talked about at the beginning of the year, I thought they were supremely overrated, and now they're playing back to what they're probably mean is, is my guess. But I think that things will normalize. It's a long year. It's probably a bad month for them. Uh, in the end, yeah. they're a team that's probably five, six games over 500. They're playing above that. They probably will get close to their season win total at this point, maybe even past it. So... It's really no time to panic, but you just have to kind of be realistic. The Yankees are more of a flawed team than some of the other teams in Major League Baseball. I mean, the Orioles are a better team than the Yankees. I mean, this, this is just what it is. And so are the Dodgers and so are the Phillies and several other teams as well. Cleveland's probably better than the Yankees too. So I, I do think they'll get to the postseason, but this is just not a surprise. In the end, your record comes back to what you usually thought they would be. Still 55 and 38, but the Yanks have lost 16 of their last 21. Is it panic time, though, at the Trump? The Yankees, an underdog today. Brian Cashman, the GM, making the trip to Tropicana Field to visit his Yankees, but he did not meet with the team. Hal Steinbrenner there, too. That seems like some anxious times up in the Bronx. We have our fifth home run derby contestant, our sixth, excuse me, Jose Ramirez yes. of the Cleveland yes. Guardians, tied for the fourth most home runs this year, 23 long balls, second in RBIs, only behind Aaron Judge, six of the eight. Craig, are your sources telling you anything about who the final two are going hmm. to be? I don't know, but I mean, I, I hope Jose Ramirez bats lefty. Guys, I'm in right field for this event, you know, like getting tickets oh, in mm. left field for like media is fine, you know, but I'm not catching home runs as media, but I'm going with my son with uh, this. And, and, you know, we we're sitting in right field, can't sit in left. It's too much money. It's like 700 a grand and the ticket fees are insane. But right field was pretty reasonable. And I guess maybe people knew ahead of time if Jose Ramirez bats lefty in this, and I'm not sure that he will, then there'll be two yeah. lefty hitters. So I would have to imagine, guys, I don't know if it's Naylor on Cleveland. I'm, I'm just not sure. But you got to get another lefty in the home run derby. I, I don't think that you could have yeah. uh, eight out of nine batters batting right-handed in home run derby. So look for that to happen. I, 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 I don't know the name, but I would think a left-handed hitter, either uh, Naylor or maybe Santander joins. So, Craig, quick question before we get to the Baltimore Orioles and Chicago Cubs game here. Quick follow-up. Are you bringing a glove to Arlington? Always, man. Always. Caught a home run two years ago. I'm going to try again. That guy knows what he's doing. Fight that with guy Zach is Campbell. a man about like his it. business. Go ahead. <laughs> Quickly here, Craig. The Cubbies win yesterday 9-2 in Camden. 30 seconds left. Will Baltimore bounce back today with Corbin Burns on the bump? Yeah, the heavy favorite today. It's either minus one and a half or don't play it would be my opinion. Cubs, you know, I can't figure them out. Sometimes they play well, sometimes not. Not a recipe for success today. So I would either take the Orioles yep. or pass Oh, second best run line record in the bigs, 51 and 40. Craig Mish, thank you as always. Maybe we'll play some video games next week. More on the early lineup next. The game that Craig Mish just previewed for you is where we start our baseball breakdowns on this Wednesday. Donnie Wright's side is locked and loaded and ready to go. We've got a fully robust slate, a couple of rainouts yesterday, a few double headers on the card for this Wednesday slate, but we start in Baltimore, the O's and the Cubs. Yesterday, Chicago, a hefty underdog. They went outright in a big way, 9-2 to in Camden to start off this midweek set. The Cubbies have won four of their last five could it be five of their last six with Shoni Iminaga on the bump 
well, if it wasn't Corbin Burns, perhaps on the other side, the Orioles, a minus 174 home money line favorite to bounce back today in Baltimore. They probably should be that high of a favorite as well. And also, as I told you, weather conditions perfect for hitting at Camden Yards today. 90 degrees at first pitch. How about this? 15 mile an hour sustained winds blowing out to left field. We might get some action. And also, if you're looking at Shota Imanaga, who maybe a couple weeks ago, we might be saying this might be one of the best pitching matchups you're going to see in Major League Baseball because Imanaga was phenomenal. He hasn't been phenomenal. Take a look at his last 30 days. Last 97 batters he's faced here, Ben. A 231 ISO combined and a 360 weighted on base percentage. Both lefty and righty hitters are getting the best of him here. Strikeout percentages, still decent to lefties at 26%, but has dipped below 20% over the past 20 days, or excuse me, past 30 days against right-handed batters. If we're taking a look at that lineup today for the Orioles, they've hit left-handed pitching quite well over the past 30 days. The question is going to be that lineup, who I don't really like all that much from the Chicago Cubs, really came to play yesterday. Can they do the same thing today? We're probably going to be betting yeah. against it, and you see the pricing according. If we're looking at the last 60 days, Corbin Burns' ERA, 1.94. XFIP minus number, 85. He's the better pitcher. The better team is the Baltimore Orioles. They should win today. I'm just interested to see what that total is going to wind up being because these are optimum hitting conditions in a true hitter's ballpark. Yesterday at the Trop, the Yanks were a slight road money line favorite against the Rays. Still lost. They have lost 16 of their last 21. Today with Marcus Stroman on the bump, New York is the road underdog in Tampa against the Rays. Zach Eflin gets the start on the other side. The total is eight. What's the play down in Tampa? Look, I just can't trust Marcus Stroman here. And forget about, like, even non-analytical numbers, right? ISO power number 180, yeah. which is right around average. 339 weighted on base percentage against him, which is right around average. He's been great against left-handed batters, struggling against righties. But if we're lining up pitchers today, 31 pitchers on the card over the past 60 days with at least 20 innings pitched, he's 30th. Marcus Stroman is 30th on the card. How about his XFIP minus number here coming in at a 126? His ERA actually isn't that bad at 3.41, but his XFIP number himself is a 5.15. You can't trust that right now. And until the Yankees really bring those bats to the table today, I don't know how far we can trust him. We're not saying that Zach Eflin is the second coming and a greatest pitcher down there, but he's been a decent yeah. pitcher for Tampa Bay. It just comes down to trustability right now. The past two weeks have been a disaster for the Yankees, and how do you trust Stroman? Fresh off a game where you couldn't trust Carlos Rodon, and he got hammered in that first inning here. Probably going to give me the Tampa Bay Rays again just because they're not playing great baseball, that one through nine. And also, I don't trust Marcus Stroman. Total at eight. Tampa won yesterday, mm -hmm. five to three. The Giants won in walk-off fashion because the Blue Jays' bullpen blew it a wild pitch. Tyler Fitzgerald scores that walk-off run. Blake Snell was back yesterday for the first time in more than a month. The true ace in San Francisco, Logan Webb, gets the start today against Toronto. The Giants aptly booked as a dollar-and-a-half favorite at home. What do you like? Yeah, runs might be tough to come by. And again, same sort of weather conditions you're going to get at night in San Francisco, Ben. Mid-60 temperatures here, wind blowing out to center field. If we look at the offense here, Springer, Horowitz, and Guerrero on for Toronto, they have elevated ISO power number and weighted on base percentages over the past 30 days against right-handed pitchers. The rest of that lineup has been absolutely abysmal. And Logan Webb, as good of numbers as you are going to find on the season, if you take a look, 485 batters he's faced, an 086 ISO, and a weighted on base percentage of 284. If we take a look at even some more analytical numbers, I have number three on my card today for pitchers, a 75 XFIP minus, a 2.84 ERA, and an XFIP number of a three even over the past 60 days. The better pitchers on the mound for the San Francisco Giants. That's why I'm seeing that total to seven. They should win this game. Logan Webb has been phenomenal, and I expect him to be great once again tonight. Four to three of the victory for the Giants yesterday. When you look at the Blue Jays, just to point this out here as we near the all-star break, and then at the end of the month, it is the trade deadline. Toronto never living up to that optimism up in the sixth. They're now nine games below 500, 41 mm. and 50. In the basement of the American League East, there has been some chatter. Are they going to be sellers ahead of the deadline? Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, George Springer. We shall see, but it has not been a good year in Toronto. 
the two at the top in the National League. It is game number two tonight in Philadelphia between the Phils and the Dodgers. The Fightins yesterday, 10 runs in a 10-1 victory over L.A. to open up what could potentially be a preview of the National League Championship Series. The Dodgers in underdog for just the sixth time this season yesterday. Now two and four straight up. The Dodgers in underdog once again. Gavin Stone gets the start for L.A., Christopher Sanchez on the other side with the Phils a home favorite. What do you expect in game number two between the Phillies and the Dodgers? Oh, this is going to be a good one here. And the reason I say that is the temperatures, again, if we already were previewing what was taking place in Baltimore, we had hot weather, humid weather, and the wind blowing out almost identical in Philadelphia. 86 degrees at first pitch here, wind blowing dead center field at 15 plus miles per hour. Now, Christopher Sanchez is going to be on the mound. He's been nothing short of phenomenal on the season. Take a look at his ISO power number through 398 batters. That's an 070. Take a look at his weighted on base percentage. That's a 280. If we're lining up Christopher Sanchez, over the past 60 days on this card today out of 31 pitchers. Ben, he's number two on the card, a 74 XFIP minus, an ERA of 2.80, an XFIP of 2.96. That's incredible. But how about this for that Dodgers lineup that we anticipate? Shohei Otani, Will Smith, Freddie Freeman, Taz Hernandez, Andy Pajes, Varjes Rojas, Kike Hernandez, and Chris Taylor. Of those batters, the only guy that I don't like in that lineup is Kike Hernandez. Yeah. Everybody else, elevated ISO power numbers, elevated weighted on base percentage against left-handed pitching. So something has to give between Sanchez and that lineup for the Dodgers. Let's flip it over to the Philadelphia Phillies. The one thing we do know is they know how to hit the baseball at home at Citizens Bank Park, plating 10 runs yesterday. Gavin Stone is on the mound for this one. Trying to take a look at Gavin Stone here, 17th overall here, Ben, out of 31 pitchers today on the card with XFIP minus of 90 which is slightly above average, but also how about this, a 2.67 ERA and a 3.93 XFIP, which is manageable here. So if I'm lining up the two lineups that we have, the total that we're seeing, this is a true hitting condition. Yesterday we had one run out of the Dodgers. Even though Sanchez has been wonderful, I don't know if that's going to be the case again today. So just by default, I believe we're looking at runs because two good hitting lineups here against yeah. two good pitchers. Sometime the weather is just that ultimate equalizer. And also, Ben, it's not as if we're saying like, oh, the weather's really nice in Seattle in a hitter in a true, true pitcher's ballpark. Excuse me. This is a yeah. great hitter's ballpark with unbelievable hitting conditions today. Maybe just lean on the over. And Bryce Harper, Kyle Schwarber back in the fold. They were welcomed back mm -hmm. yesterday. They didn't really add up to the 10 runs. Maybe they're more involved in the offense today. I do believe Schwarbaum had an RBI. Gavin Stone not great in his recent start last Wednesday against Arizona. Allowed four earned to the Diamondbacks. Crushed the Dodgers 12-4. to But in his previous six... The Dodgers won all six of those games at the end, and Stone himself registered the win in five of the six. But a quick break from baseball, Donnie. Some breaking news oh, out of Team oh. USA for our men's national team. Kawhi Leonard is withdrawing from Team USA for the Paris Olympics and will be replaced. Sources telling FanDuel TV's Sham Sharania, Boston's Derek White is a strong candidate to replace Leonard on Team U. This guy doesn't even want to play basketball ever. Kawhi Leonard, it seems, out of that Olympic roster for the United States. Yeah, we'll see. We never get a true indicator of where Kawhi Leonard's health is at ever at any time. I mean, it wasn't too long ago where he tore his ACL and was still listed as questionable for games and heading into the playoffs because nobody had any ideas. Who knows if he was injured at this point? But also, you're right on the cusp of playing an exhibition game heading towards the Olympics yeah. here and bowing out. I'm going to assume it wasn't because he just doesn't feel like playing. It might be that knee flaring up once again, but we'll never know. Right. Yeah, we'll never know. We'll never truly hear what happened. You would assume it is injury. You would assume that Kawhi Leonard gave it a go during training camp and was just not fully healthy. But again, injuries continue to play his career at the most significant level, whether it be playoff basketball in the NBA or here with Team USA. Again, Derek White from the champion Boston Celtics expected, as Sham said, to replace Kawhi Leonard. Why not just bring Cooper Flagg over from the short trip mm. with the select team with Team USA Free and Caitlin have Clark. him on the roster? Wow. Yeah, now you might be you wanna, on something. Wanna... You want headlines? You want ratings right now? You want to sell jerseys? Caitlin Clark on the men's team? Sign me up, BWS. Sign me up.
Make Donnie commissioner of USA basketball. Now back to the baseball as we continue our breakdowns. The Braves have won four straight, including each of the opening two in Phoenix against the Diamondbacks. Uncle Chuck, Charlie Morton on the bump today in Atlanta, a slight road favorite once again in Arizona. Will it be five wins in a row for the Braves? It could be. I see that number of nine here, and I take a look, and I see these two pitchers. They can be hittable here, but they're right on average with their XFIT minus numbers. Charlie Morton is compared to Slade Ciccone. But here's what's interesting again, because what are you going to trust? The veteran pitcher in Charlie Morton over the past 30 days, a 175 ISO, which is right around average. A 311 weighted on base percentage, right around average. The reason I bring that up is if you flip it back on Arizona's lineup today over the past 30 days against right-handed pitching, I don't know if there's a better lineup out there. Corbin Carroll, 164 ISO. Marte, 250. Peterson, 328. Walker, 410. Guriel, 200. Moreno, 270. Suarez, 239. And Thomas, 333. This team is built. And I'm also not talking about, hey, 10 to 15 at bats. Most of these guys, 65 plus at bats here. I believe they get yeah. it cranking against Charlie Morton. Now, also, you say to yourself, boy, you really don't want to take overs in Atlanta Braves games. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But Ciccone on the opposite side, not a great pitcher in any stretch on the season. 264 batters face spent a 215 ISO and a weighted on base percentage of 352. And again, as I said, I don't love that lineup, but we have some decent ISO power numbers against right-handed pitching over the past 30 days from Kellenic, Albies, Riley, Olsen, and Ozuna, and also Murphy here. I just think by case, by case, I do think the yeah. bats will show up today for the Diamondbacks. Not sure if they win, but I think we might be able to get 10 runs in this game based on these two average pitchers in the lineups that might come to play. Total is nine out in downtown Phoenix. The Braves have the most unders this year, 53 in total. Atlanta, the only team in all of Major League Baseball that has played 60% or more of their games to and over. More than 62% of the games for the Atlanta Braves this year have hit the under, excuse me, the under, a lot of unders for Atlanta. A couple more baseball previews on the other side and a best bet for you on this Wednesday. That is still to come on the early line here on the Sports Grid Network. Join us after the break here on the early line. We now head out to San Diego where the Mariners desperately needed a win yesterday and the M's got it. They had dropped nine of their last 13 before this midweek set began against the Padres. Today it's an earlier start out on the west coast a little after 3 30 p.m local time 6 40 p.m eastern time here on the eastern seaboard minus 138 the number in favor of san diego the mariners now an underdog the over under seven and a half will seattle continue its winning ways in southern california I don't know. It might be a bounce back spot here for San Diego. So I do think the better pitcher on the mound yesterday yeah. obviously was with the Mariners, but I don't think that could be the case today. Bryce Miller on the mound today, a 97 X fit minus, which isn't bad by any stretch. An ERA over the past 60 days, a little bit elevated at 4.67. He does have an average 3.98 X fit number. But if we flip it over to the other side, my number five pitcher on the card today is Michael King, an 80 X fit minus number of the past 60 days, a three ERA coupled with an X fit number of 3.20. Also, when we take a look at Bryce Miller. He's been very good, Ben, against right-handed batters, but struggling against lefties. You take a look at that lineup today. A lefty in Arise, a lefty in Profar, a lefty in Cronusworth, also Merrill, and also Peralta. So I'm going to go ahead with the San Diego Padres in a bounce-back spot today. I think they have the better pitcher and the better lineup on their side. Therefore, I think they win. The Pittsburgh Pirates played at 12 yesterday on the road against the Milwaukee Brewers. The Pirates fascinate me. They're 44 and 47. They're three games below 500 since the start of June. The Buccos have not Mm -hmm. been worse than five games below 500, but never better than two games below 500, hovering in mediocrity and slightly below. The Brew crew, a dollar and a half favorite at home today to even up this midweek set. Do you agree with the odds? I'm taking a look here at maybe as a chance where the Pittsburgh Pirates get blown up a little bit with Martin Perez on the mound. Last 30 days here, a 182 ISO power number against lefty and righty batters combined, a weighted on base percentage of 375. But here's what's going to happen today. You're going to get an influx of right-handed bats in that lineup for the Brewers, and that's exactly where Martin Perez struggles. A 235 ISO and a 421 weighted on base percentage over his last 36 batters that he's facing. Also, he does have a last 60-day ERA of 7.23, which equates to an XFIP minus number of 116 we should get a victory today for the brewers 
A ton of long balls yesterday for the Buckos. Brian Reynolds, he's an all-star. Jack Sawinski, the youngster, hit one deep. Rowdy Telez, that's how you score 12 runs in Milwaukee. In the final game of four against the Pittsburgh Pirates in the extended weekend series, I thought Francisco Lindor would record an RBI. It didn't happen. He waited a day. He had three RBIs yesterday back at City Field in the opener against the Nats as the Mets won 7-5. to five. And Brandon Nimmo, six RBIs mm. in his last three. He's had three or he had three RBIs yesterday. Paces all the Mets with 58 this year. The Mets at home once again today against the Nationals. What's the play? Yeah, we'll keep it short here. That trifecta that we're going to talk about the Baltimore weather, the Philadelphia weather, and now extension up there into the weather yep. there for the New York Mets at home. 79 degrees at first pitch, 17 mile an hour winds blowing out the dead center field. Two pitchers side by side with XFIP minus numbers today at a 111 and a 114. Both ERAs over the past 60 days approaching five here and high XFIP numbers. So we're looking at runs just to keep it short on this one up in Flushing. Yeah, the Mets or, nearly me, the a $2. dollar no, it's in Flushing. Yeah. You got it right. Flushing. Yep. Part of New York yeah. City. Come on. What, where else would Boom. it be, brother? Come on now. You know what it is. All right. So it. that is where things stand around Major League Baseball. A couple of double headers mm-hmm. today between the White Sox and the Twins, the Cardinals and the Royals. In the Show Me State Showdown, the Interleague Affair. We've got five games in the WNBA. A ton to choose from here with some semifinals on the pitch as well. So before we say farewell and goodbye, it's time for a Wednesday best bet. It is time for Bye Bye Bye. DRS, what is your best of all the bets on this Wednesday? So there's only one place to go. We're going back to Fenway. 80 degree temperatures, wind blowing out to left field yesterday. You saw the bats on display on both sides. We're going to pick up Tyler O'Neill, the right handed power hitting left fielder for Boston. His last 29 at bats against left handed pitching, a 423 ISO and a 530 weighted on base percentage. Sears is a left handed pitcher who can't get right handed batters out. We're going to take, we're going to do the simple route here, not get greedy, just to get an RBI minus 110 for Tyler O'Neill. He gets the job done tonight. The Red Sox are 10 games above 500 at Fenway DRS. That's where I'm going to be this weekend on Saturday. My first Ah. ever game at Fenway Park. I cannot wait for it. 